Captain's Log, date November 7th, 1942. After approximately one month of shore leave in Brisbane, the crew is making the final preparations to the boat before the sailfish departs on her second war patrol. While in port, we had a brand new twin 20mm anti-aircraft gun installed onto the conning tower of the boat. This should give us a better chance of defending ourselves against those pesky aircraft if we happen to get caught on the surface. At exactly 1 o'clock AM, the sailfish slowly broke away from her tender under the cover of absolute darkness. Our orders are to patrol the waters off Bougainville once again. There is still brutal fighting on the island of Guadalcanal. Hopefully, we can put a dent into the Japanese supplies being funneled to the island and give our marines a much needed break. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here and welcome back to more Silent Hunter 4 Wolves of the Pacific. We have just left Brisbane and it's the morning after we left. And let's hop onto the bridge of the USS Sailfish here. So we're cruising at a nice steady 10 knots and wow that's pretty nice seeing the moon and the sun like that. And uh, yeah it's pretty quiet up here, it's kind of crazy. But uh, anyway, the boat has been undergone a few changes. One of the main changes is we have a twin 20 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. So if the Japanese uh, aircraft come close and it's just one and I'm feeling a little frisky, we might try to shoot it out. Um, that's a big might. <laughs> I don't know if we actually will because, you know, that's more or less a bad idea. If we get a hit from a bomb, we're pretty much screwed, and that would be the end of the sailfish. And in a let's play where we're one death away from and ending it all, uh, I'd rather not take those risks. Uh, I, I said there was a lot of changes. There's really not. I, I kind of over-exaggerated. Um, the other change, really, is I've loaded up four Mark 23 torpedoes in the stern tubes. Now, the only difference between these Mark 23s and the Mark 14s is the speed. These Mark 23s are locked at fast setting, which is 46 knots. That means their maximum range is 4,500 yards. They are still steam torpedoes, so the, the enemy ships will be able to see the wake as it approaches. And that is the real downside to all of the torpedoes we have at this point. Uh, the Mark 14 is still plagued with problems, however. It takes a while for those to get sorted. More closer to mid to late 1943 is when they start uh, kind of ironing out those problems. Now, the crew got a lot of medals and such. And we have a medic now. Uh, Norval D. Skywalker. Nice. Uh, he's our medic. Uh, all he really does is make it so the crew uh, gets well rested quicker and uh, he heals all of their wounds, which that's okay. Some of these special abilities I'm not too fond of. I honestly thought Trigger Maru uh, got rid of all of them, but uh, apparently not. But this one's okay. I don't mind this. This is actually helpful and not too gamey, I guess is the word for it. Um... The last time I actually really played Trigger Maru for a whole playthrough was the previous version. It was like 1.9 or something like that. But anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. Uh, who cares? None of y'all do. <laughs> so, also, my last videos were kind of dark. The last two. So I'm going to increase the gamma, gamma, whatever the hell you want to call it, uh, for these. So let me know how it looks. Hopefully it's a little better. The, the problem is YouTube kind of just shits on my quality, the quality of my videos, so it makes it a little more difficult, but anyway, we will continue on our course, and as you can see, our course is laid out here. We're going to go through the Coral Sea and over here towards uh, the Guadalcanal area. It is uh, November 7th, and in, what, six days, something happens here, uh, <laughs> so maybe we'll be there by the time that happens, maybe not, but uh, I'm kind of shooting for it. Uh, it's the, the first naval battle of Guadalcanal. That's what we're going to try to witness, in case you haven't picked up on it yet. Alright, so we are uh, sailing to victory or death, and I'll see you guys shortly. Alright, we have an aircraft spotted, manning battle stations now. We're going to need to head flank. I need to get a gunner on the AA gun immediately. Uh, this guy kind of snuck up on me. Fire at will. Uh, I'm not sure where he is. Where? Also, I need to move this down. Alright. 
Here we go. Where's he at? Oh. 047. Ah. Uh. Oh. There he is. He's coming in hard. Fast. It's a biplane. Fire at will, please. Fire at will. There we go. Unload into this. Hard to starboard. Hard to starboard. Come on. You can get some good hits. He's... It's a float plane. Ooh, shit! Oh, God. See, and that's why this was bad. Oh, wow. Okay. We have quite a bit of damage, no heavy flooding. You better be unloading into this son of a bitch. Yes, sir. Hard to Must have been a very small bomb. Are you okay? Uh, my deck crew is okay. They hit us kind of right in the forward torpedo room. Alright. Yeah, the bulkhead first. Looks like pretty uh, minimal damage. It must have been a very tiny bomb. Where'd he go? Yes, sir. Yes, zero. One, four, seven. Zero, zero, zero. Oh, I thought I saw him, but it was just zero. a speck on my monitor. Is he closing? I don't know. I don't want to dive with this damage right now. Oh, that was that was bad. That was a lot better than it could have been, however. I was expecting that to be a little worse. I'm surprised he's not uh, coming in for a second attack. Let's check on our damage here. Alright, yeah, we're, we're okay. Tor the torpedo data computer is uh, the only thing that needs to be repaired at this point. 2% hull damage. It must have been a tiny bomb. Why is... What happened to the gunner? Why... Oh, I think it's because I'm too close. Yeah, the crew likes to do that whenever you get close to him in this game. Is he out of visual range? No visual contact. So it looks like he pissed off. Well, we're going to stay on battle stations for a little bit because that was kind of scary. <laughs> And uh, it is November 12th, 1942, and it's just getting uh, to noon here. I got another radar. Oh, that must be the Japanese aircraft. All right, well, we're going to continue on course. Um, wow, okay, well, that was exciting. We can secure from battle stations. Now it looks like he kind of uh, decided to go his separate way, secure from battle which is smart for him. Oh, I've learned. We'll dive next time because that was that was bad. <laughs> All right. Well, um, everything's repaired, so uh, we'll go ahead and keep sailing here. We should make contact with something shortly. Uh, action is just over the horizon. So, and once we actually sight the forces, we'll uh, I'll start uh, giving a little history lesson. I don't know too much about the Battle of Guadalcanal. Uh, so my knowledge is extremely limited and I've I've never really done this in game before either um, been a part of a large engagement so hopefully my game doesn't crash that's really what I'm worried about is uh, my game crashing here but we'll see we will see uh, I'll keep you guys posted so we have quite a few radar contacts on our scope at the moment and they're dead ahead of us as you can see here and the reason I have not submerged is because they are all Americans. Uh, those are all Liberty Cargos, it looks like. And uh, quite a few American warships uh, escorting it. And let's look at the map. Yeah, it's one big convoy. Um, my assumption is they're all letting off troops onto Guadalcanal here. Troops and supplies. Which is pretty cool. It looks like it's actually three separate convoys in-game. But let's go ahead and get get a closer look, shall we? This is a lot of ships. Now, if I'm wrong, I think we would be getting shot at at this point. It'd be interesting interesting to see a lot of uh, Japanese aircraft come and engage here. But yeah, here we go. Look, good old Liberty cargoes. 
And it looks like some troop transports back there. And a cruiser, it looks like. Yeah. And there's a destroyer. Looks like a Brooklyn class, maybe. Not too sure on that one. Yeah, I think that's a Brooklyn class. Let's let's take a let's take a little look here. It's definitely not a battleship. Um, hmm. Oh, Bristol. Yeah, that's probably it right there. Bristol class destroyer. Not a Fletcher. I don't think a Brooklyn Brooklyn is a destroyer. I think that's might actually be a cruiser. What the hell do I know? But uh, yeah, we're getting close to go time. We need to kind of get to this area, which is known as uh, Iron Bottom Sound, for obvious reasons. Uh, a lot of naval engagements took place here. Because the Japanese used this route to get to uh, Henderson Field and shell it multiple times. So, we kind of need to get to that area. I, my, I kind of want to encounter the American force and sail with them here. Oh, it looks like we're going right in between this, uh, this convoy. Oh, wow, this is pretty neat. But the, what was happening was the Japanese situation on Guadalcanal. I'll just go ahead and give my limited knowledge on the battle. The Japanese situation on Guadalcanal was getting pretty bad. Their, their garrison there was starting to starve, and, um, they weren't getting the nutrition they needed. It seemed... I, I read somewhere that pretty much they were surviving on just rice. I guess the only reason they lasted as long as they did is because they had a shit ton of rice, but nothing else. No no protein. So, um, to re relieve their troops on Guadalcanal, they assembled a very large convoy filled with supplies and I believe some troops as well to uh, help. And this convoy would sail and offload its supplies on the night of November 13th. Simultaneously, the Japanese assembled a task force consisting of two battleships, the Hei and Kirishima, and they were tasked with bombarding Henderson Field because at this point the Americans had made uh, operational use out of Henderson Field and it was fully operational and they were using their planes to full effect. That's probably why we can uh, safely land these troops and supplies on Guadalcanal during the daytime. So they needed to help their garrison, give them supplies, and take out Henderson Field. The battleships were sent to take out Henderson Field. They were actually equipped with Type 3 shells, is what they were called, and they were uh, incendiary munitions, and they kind of exploded above the ground and you know scattered everywhere pretty much the goal was to take out all the allied aircraft so uh... that's that's the japanese plane at the moment that thing has quite a few guns on it oh wow yeah wow this is this is pretty cool <laughs> sailing through a convoy like this now the, the battle will most likely not play out as it did in real life, so I, I highly doubt it will. It's, there's probably no way. For one, uh, naval torpedoes aren't in the game, which played a massive part in pretty much all of the naval engagements in the Pacific. Torpedoes on destroyers were played a massive role. So uh, let's just go ahead and get a little closer here. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, we make contact with the Americans shortly. And uh, we'll fit into our fleet boat role and go and scout for them ahead of the uh, ahead of the fleet. But we'll see. All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll keep you folks updated, and I'll see you guys shortly. So I have encountered the American force here, as you can see. Let's go ahead and uh, stop. The water's starting to get a little choppy here. And it looks like, I think a Japanese aircraft is flying in. Let's go take a look at it. 
Uh, I received two radar contacts moving in very quickly. And there are flashes over here. This is the American force that was assembled to counter the Japanese force. And we'll, we'll go into a little more depth about that after we watch this. Some pretty explosions, maybe. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully none of our destroyers get sunk. Oh, yeah, they are indeed shooting at some sort. Yep, there's the, there's the Japanese airplanes. Let's see if they get them. Looks like uh, Betty Bombers. Let's go ahead and see. Oh, yeah. Oh, the sky is just lit up with anti-aircraft. Oh, and that one got hit. Looks like pretty bad damage. I don't know if they could sustain with those kinds of fires. Let's go down, down, down to our warships. Oh, it looks like even more are coming in. Gunfire is, uh... Pretty goddamn loud. Oh, oh, yep, there they are. Looks like he's going in. Is he going to drop his bombs? We'll find out. That's probably not the best attack approach. Okay, what is my radar operator screaming about? Oh, there's a lot of planes. Man our battle stations. Oh wow, yeah, there is quite a few. Who's on the... It's not on the gun. Alright, you're our qualified gunner. Mason D. Beach, get on there. Be somebody. Alright. Oh yeah, they're all lighting up. Where's the aircrafts? Probably start moving. Single contact. Bearing. One, Let's make sure. Uh... Four, nine. Long range. Oh, yep, there's one. There's the Betty. There's another Single plane contact. coming in. One, oh, it looks like the Japanese four, have found our fleet. Nine. Don't think this actually happened in real life, but uh. I'll talk more about the fleet composition once this is over. This is kind of crazy. I wasn't expecting anything like this. Looks like he's coming. Let's go ahead and start moving. You better start firing at him. Don't make me get on that gun. He's coming in for us. Oh, there's two of them. Are you going to make me get on that gun? Fire at him. Oh, shit. He's coming in for us. Where is he? Reload. Oh, shoot. Is he going to crash? Oh. Oh, that was so close. I don't know if we hit him. Oh, oh no! Oh, that was the plane blowing up. Okay, that wasn't one of our ships. It looks like they're all starting to go down here. Yeah, he's plummeting down to the sea. Alright. There's even more. Pop some shots that way. It looks like they're all kind of aiming for us, which isn't surprising. Uh, the AI is programmed to, you know, <laughs> kill the player. So, yeah, it looks like they're all... Alright, let's reload here. I don't know what they're diving down on. 
All right, I'm gonna let my gunner take over. He has to be better than me. No, you better fire at will, son. You better engage those Bettys. Fire now. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh my god, these buttons are kind of... Kill him. Mason, Mason, whatever the hell your name is. I'm gonna court martial you. If you don't start firing that goddamn machine gun. Oh, like that one? You could have killed him. What is wrong? There we go. There we go. Be somebody. Are you reloading? What the hell's wrong with you? Oh my god. There is something wrong with you, Mason. I guess they're kind of out of range. They are flying mighty high. Well, as this massive bombardment... Oh. Oh no. You made me do it. Okay, our gun can't train that high. They really like crashing near me, don't they? Get that one. That one might be dead since so I'm shooting at it. Looks like one crashed right there. You are not getting a medal when we get home. I'm gonna write a very detailed report about how you refu refuse to pull the trigger on some Japanese bombers. Oh, we're attacking our fleet. Well, anyway, let's talk about the fleet. Speaking about the fleet, uh, this fleet was composed of uh, five cruisers, one, two, three, four, and five, and eight destroyers. Uh, they're all way back there. I don't know if we can see them. What's the date? Yeah, it's still November 12th. Uh, I think in real life, the destroyers were kind of in the front, creating sort of a vanguard and the cruisers were more in the back. Uh, this guy named Callahan, Callahan, I hope I'm not saying that wrong, uh, was in charge of this task force, and he made his flagship the USS San Francisco, which sounds fine and dandy. Uh, there, there's only one problem there, and he, get, he gets a lot of shit for this. Uh, history is, it does not look on him with very good eyes. <laughs> Uh, he made his flagship, the USS San Francisco, and this ship did not have advanced sensors, especially compared to the other ships in the line. Uh, I forgot which one it was, but one of the other cruisers had very good radar and other sensors. I, I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure the San Francisco didn't have radar at all. And he chose this as his flagship because he had sentimental value to it, and yada yada yada, but at the end of the day, he kind of shot himself in the foot there. And just from the way I'm talking, you might you might <laughs> infer how this battle goes, but uh, we might be able to change that a little bit. So the San Francisco during this battle was a complete just madhouse. Um, it because they were receiving information from all of these other ships, and the. Callahan did not have a fully updated picture of the whole situation, so uh, it, it turns out to be to go a little different than he planned. The Japanese, on the other hand, were not as prepared as they should have been. They had just sailed through multiple heavy storms to get to their location, and that's where they met the Americans in the Iron Bottom Sound. Now the Japanese force, I already talked about the two battleships, but it consisted of two battleships, the Hei and the Kirishima, and one cruiser and nine destroyers. So the Americans are outgunned. The only reason the Americans really knew about this operation is because they had hacked the, naval, the Japanese naval codes. Uh, I, the Japanese actually changed them pretty shortly, a little bit before this battle, and we hacked them so quick pretty quickly so uh, that was never a problem I also read somewhere that it was a scout plane that sighted them so it could have been either both who knows I'm no expert by no by any stretch of the imagination so uh, don't quote me on any of this 
I have a very rough understanding of how the battle took place. I've read, I've read up more on the uh, Atlantic Theater of Operations, but this stuff is pretty interesting. It, the, playing this game again has uh, encouraged me to go out and read some more about the Pacific Theater and about fleet boats and uh, these naval engagements. So we'll move in pretty closely. Um, we're just going to let them pass us here. I this cr this task force kind of sails around in a circle until they meet the Japanese. Uh, I don't think they did that historically. Um, because A, as we just saw, a Japanese plane could just fly over and know the entire fleet composition of the American fleet. And uh, I don't think that's a very good idea. So uh, we'll follow them around a little bit and uh, wait for the, the final battle. So I'll probably cut the episode here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, thank you all for watching as always. We had some pretty crazy anti-aircraft action there, and uh, we will prepare for the, the engagement.